Talk about the days of slavery of three black ladies out in the cotton field. Two of them older, one younger. Now the one younger had a real nice body. You know, full-breasted and stuff. Big hips and stuff. So she told her, the two older ones that she's tired of. I'm tired of this shit. You know, picking this cotton, sweating, turning my fingers off. They say, you better get back to work. You know, the master come, he gonna whoop you, girl. She said, I ain't gonna afraid of no whooping. I don't think he gonna whoop his ass and, and smack the butt and pat herself down in the front. Well, you know, them uh, plantations had them long roads where them uh, slave owners come down. And when she saw that car coming, she took her dress and that car was approaching. And she raised the dress all the way up like she was wiping the sweat off her forehead and stuff. And she was naked. Man, he drove over in the ditch. And she worked it. Everybody got fed. And the black dudes the same way. They be outside peeing. And the white girl, she looks lady. Look out the window. So she asked the slave girl, she said, come here, Sue. Yes, ma'am. What is that he's holding in his hand right there? Is that a rope? She said, no, ma'am, it's no rope. That's his ding dong. She said, a what? She said, a ding dong. That's what he's holding. And she said, oh, my God, i never seen nothing like that. Is, 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 is it real? She said, yes, ma'am. So when the slave master used to... Uh, Lee, go to them auctions to get more slaves. She'll call that black dude in. He ain't gonna do it. I'm gonna tear her guts out. And that's what kept us alive during slavery. So after slavery, when black people had all them signs, when the white people had all them signs up, no blacks allowed and all this, slavery's over, we couldn't get a job or nothing. It was a black man that realized, hey, hold up. Have y'all forgotten about them white girls? How they kept us alive in slavery, man? Kept them white men off of them. Nigga, we was, we was doing them. Hunching them. So, they went back to that. That's when pimping came out. You know, that's when the game was passed from city to city. Man, get your pimping on, man. These white girls, they want this ding dog from slavery, the ding-dong, that's what they want, the rope, that's what they call it, the rope, and uh, so things were looking good out of here, and we survived, man, you know, we was pimping, we was getting it on, the groove was there, but then, it come the new generation, they want to take it from the white lady to the black lady, to anybody, yeah, I pimp anybody, dogs, anything. You know, that's why society's messed up, man. Ain't nobody gonna stick by the code. And I knew the code. I knew the pimp game. Matter of fact, there's 125 rules to the pimp game. The first one is this. Every man should stand up with his fellow man against any bitch to put himself before a man unless the bitch is yours. That's the first rule of the pimp game. So, I was well-schooled in all this, man. I know what's happening out here in the world, man. I'm putting y'all up on it, man. Yeah.